Hey guys, welcome back to another OSPOV review. Um, today we got a 2018 Toyota CHR. Uh, this is the Kuba spec. Um, so this is wrapped in the crystal pearl color with the black roof. So two-tone, looks very nice. Um, we're gonna have a look at the exterior first. We're gonna look at the interior and its features. And then we'll go for a quick drive and come back for our verdict. So we're gonna start here at the front first. Um, so you've got these very attractive uh, lights over here. Uh, you've got daytime running lights down there. All LED, full LED, low beam, high beam, and as well as the turn signal. The turn signal is right here and it's one of the sequential turn signals. I'll show you right now. It looks very, very nice. you got the Toyota badge over here which is uh, hides away the radar cruise control. Uh, so the radar system for the cruise control, you got cameras up there right up at the top of the windscreen um, As well as for the distance and everything else um, You got front parking sensors uh, for the front hidden away very nicely with the grill down below um, with the LED uh, Fog lights as well You got a fake um, Grills over there, but otherwise the car itself. It looks nice. It looks attractive in my eyes all right, let's go ahead and move to the side, which where <laughs> this car looks fantastic in my eyes. Starting at the wheels, it is 18 inch wheels on the Kuba, smaller wheels on the lower spec models. Uh, that pearlescent looks very nice on the sun, uh, sun shines into it. You got blacked out door mirrors as well with LED turn signal just over there, that little, little part. Uh, keyless entry, of course. Um, you got this blacked out sort of plastic that goes around uh, Give it some character with the door handle right up here Privacy glass for the back as well Moving on to the back This reminds me of the um, the Yaris GR that came out not long ago uh, As I said really really fantastic design. Um, I like how it's sort of has some width at the back um, And that gives us some presence it's a very, very stylish car, as I said. Full LED lighting systems for the back as well. Um, and then brake light right up here with the shark tail. This spoiler as well, I don't think it's doing much downforce, but it looks fantastic. It adds to that character and stylishness. CHR logo and the Kuba spec logo, which is blacked out as well. Opening the boot, it's not electrically assisted or anything. It's just normal gas struts. Um, so the boot you have 377 liters of space You got some storage compartments at the bottom over here as well um, And you got your spare tire, which is a temporary spare tire um, Yeah, you got some lights here um, Some tied down points on the sides and over there as well Closing it with this handle right here. You got a rear camera Yeah Really, really nice design. Got this sort of fake diffuser look, uh, which looks like, I don't know what they're trying to do here, an exhaust or the Formula One brake lights. Um, that's really it. Let's go ahead and show you guys the engine. Alrighty, the beating heart of this CHR is the four cylinder, 1.2 liter, the smallest engine we have ever reviewed on the channel making only 85 kilowatts and 185 newton meters of torque not the best numbers um but it is what it is um it is linked to a seven speed sort of speed at cvt um so there's no gears but it's continuous uh regardless it says seven speeds it is <coughs> powering the front wheels of the CHR. Uh, the CHR Kuba does come with all-wheel drive um, and that is as an option. All right guys, so getting into the interior of the car, we're gonna start at the back. Uh, no keyless entry on this door. Um, and this is a really interesting design, but it's not annoying. It looks good in my opinion. All right, so the door itself, I love this 3D uh, sort of, I don't know what do you call this, some sort of decoration or, or, or panel here on the door which is all around the interior automatic windows for the back chrome handle uh, you can see that sloping roof line which looks nice but eats into your space especially when you're trying to get into the car getting in though 
Uh, the seats are very, very soft. This is with the leather, um, leather trim. Closing the door. Sounds good. Uh, so in terms of legroom, it's pretty good. Headroom, which is I'm very, very surprised about. Not too bad as well. My head is not touching the roof. Um, I'm 179 centimeters tall. Unfortunately, no climate control vents towards the back. Um, that's quite unfortunate. No connectivity ports either. This does not come with the car. Uh, no center um, armrest or anything as well. Quite disappointing again. Um, the windows are very, very small, as I said, with the sloping roof line. But, you know, it looks good from the outside, but it's not super practical from the inside. Um, otherwise, really happy with it. The space is pretty good. I was impressed with the space. The seats are so comfortable and soft. The leather is very, very nice. Um, but no soft touch on the doors over here. Very hard points for you to rest your elbow can get uncomfortable with longer trip especially when you don't have a center armrest over here all right so let's have a look at the front now uh kilo century as i said um the door design is very similar to the back as well with the 3d panel uh sort of effect over here which looks very nice as well uh you got some chrome around soft touch finally for the side uh door for your elbow uh, that black piano continues all around the cabin, which is very nice when it's clean. But it's very, very hard to keep clean in the first place. Uh, the leather trim continues. Uh, the front uh, driver and passenger seats are uh, heated but not ventilated in the 2018. So getting in and turning on the car is just your foot on the brake pedal and then just press the starter button over here fires right up very very quiet engine um, so you are greeted by the 4.2 inch uh, multi sort of LCD screen over here which you can control a lot of a lot of stuff which I think it shouldn't um, these things that really annoyed me first thing is I was I got into the car and I'm trying to find this drive drive mode settings um, and I couldn't find it and you can find it inside the screen uh, not the most intuitive thing, but it works. I wish there was a button, uh, physical buttons for things like that, like for example the drive mode where it can be changed quite a bit. Blind spot monitoring as well. You cannot, you don't have a physical button on the sides where most cars have it over here to turn it on and off. Uh, you can only do it through this screen over there. Um, so yeah, it looks all right. Nothing too annoying about it. Um, it's nice and bright. You got Chi monitor for some reason, um, but yeah. So the steering wheel itself, that black piano continues over here. Looks nice. Hard to keep clean. Uh, on the right hand side, you got controls for your uh, LCD screen over there, uh, as well as uh, lane departure warning and lane keeping assist. It's a, uh, a sort of uh, passive or uh, not as strong as of assist as uh, lane keeping. Um, but it assists you to get back into lane. Uh, radar cruise control as well. Uh, this is so you can change the distance. We'll show you that on the road. You got your media controls over here. Uh, volume up, track, um, inline sound, decline calls. You got your horn. Sounds good. Um, on the right hand side, you do have uh, uh, high beam assist. So this should turn it on and off when it doesn't see the car in front. Uh, moving on to the left, that dashboard looks very nice. This leather um, looks nice and it's the same color as the side panel as I said over here. Um, the infotainment system, it's a 6.1 inch, uh, um, Bluetooth only. Uh, it does have sat nav, uh, but it's very, very old school. Um, not much for you to sort of interact with no apple carplay no android auto as well you got your climate control um over here physical buttons very very good very simple as well as your uh, heated seats for the right hand uh, for the driver and for the passenger um it is covered with that black piano as i said that continues from here all the way to that vent over there um Again, it just it looks dirty when it's dirty. It doesn't look very nice. Um, but yeah, dual climate control. 
no vents at the back as I said uh, but the touch points feel good uh, this is all soft touch soft touch for the front the back is really embarrassing to be honest with no soft touch for the elbow support moving on to the center console and this is black piano madness over here they just went crazy and put a whole black piano panel over there um, yeah not the best thing you got some storage over there where you, you can't fit your phone in you got a big cup holder the cup holders are very big so it is that the 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 um cup does move about the place quite a bit this is your transmission lever for your seven speed cvt uh electronic handbrake uh traction off um and then auto hold or hold assist uh you got center console very very small as well uh, 12 volt socket over here uh, no usb ports in the car uh, not the most impressive thing ever all right i think we're gonna go ahead and go for the drive now um, and show you guys how this car drives on the road all right guys so driving the chr we're gonna start up in sport mode and do a quick zero to 100 uh we're gonna turn off ac and then we'll just launch it no brake boost or anything just roll onto the throttle here we go As you can see that CVT Nothing too impressive uh, We were almost running out of road uh, It is just very 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 underpowered in my opinion It looks sporty, but it's not sporty at all um, We're gonna switch it back now into normal mode All right, we're gonna do a quick in-town drive now um, and then we're gonna go ahead and go onto the freeway to see how the car drives on the freeway um, In terms of the actual In terms of the actual drive of the car the suspension was super 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 comfortable uh, Silks are bumped very well uh, In terms of wind noise and insulation of the car. It's very very good really impressed with it as well as you can see a bump over here it takes it relatively soft. It's damped properly. It's damped nicely. Uh, nothing too harsh. I would have thought they would have done a much harsher suspension to make it feel like a sporty coupe or sporty, you know, um, SUV. But really, it's not that bad. Uh, the suspension is very good. The CVT transmission, even though it's very lazy um, when it is trying to pick up speed, but when it does pick up speed. Uh, it's very smooth because there is basically no gear shifts um, and the engine is super super quiet it's a baby baby engine with 1.2 liters of displacement um, and uh, it's just driving it even in normal mode without the eco thing without, without the eco uh, drive mode just feels so slow and lazy off the start where you really have to put your foot down even though you think that it's enough but you're putting your foot maybe halfway through the pedal and nothing's happening the eco indicator turns on straight away um, and that's even when it's in normal mode to put it onto eco mode temporarily until you push it and then the eco mode does go away brake pedal feel is very very smooth as well um, very easy for you to stop smoothly and good braking performance relatively for what it is in terms of steering very 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 good as well uh, very light in parking maneuvers and slow speeds um, and then it tightens up and it's very very accurate and direct um, really really happy with the way it drives the only problem is that engine is just super super underpowered and it's really frustrating when you're trying to drive it in town we're gonna test out the turning over here we're gonna put it into manual mode so by putting uh, the lever to the right the gear shift lever and then to shift down you go down it's simulating gears because it is a CVT after all In terms of turning, it's very, very, very um, put in place properly. Yeah, in terms of turning, as you saw, it kept you in place very nicely. Even though the suspension is nice and soft and comfortable, as I said, 
it still is uh, firm enough um, for it to stay in place and not have too much body motion. The seats itself, they're very comfortable. The leather is really soft, just as I said, for the back. Um, it keeps you, it's quite supportive. Um, so it does keep you in place very well. As I said, that engine, you just have to get used to it as you do have to hustle the engine a little bit more. It is rated at 6.5 liters, 100 kilometers um, by Toyota um, for the fuel efficiency. Um, this is doing 7.6. It's not that far off. This car does more in-town drive uh, rather than freeway. Uh, when you do get onto the freeway, it is it should be a lot better. Getting up to speed, it's just really uh, not the fastest thing. Um, you do have to hustle it a little more, at least over that 2,000 RPM uh, to get any power from the engine. It's really interesting because most of the turbocharged engines that I've drove um, from different manufacturers, turbocharged engines feels like you get torque from the very, very low end. It's not the case for this. Um, overtaking speed is okay when it's got, it gets going, but yeah, the acceleration is just not there. Turning on cruise control is very easy. Toyota stuff again, just press the this button over here it tells you that from motorway use only and then you just put the lever down which should set 110 very very good nothing too annoying um, cruise control is very nice I drove around the freeway for a while um, it brakes well uh, and you can change the distance using this uh, button as I said Insulation is very, very good. Here is a smoother surface over here. Um, as you can hear, I'll turn off the AC again, just so you can hear it. It's very, very good. As you can see, the radar cruise control here, keeping us a safe distance between the car and the, for the car in front of us. Um, lane keeping assistance doesn't do too much when you are crossing the line. It just sort of uh, assists and turn the wheel just a tiny bit, barely feel it. If you don't have your wheels, it sometimes doesn't even recognize the lane. Um, not the best system. Uh, I'll call it more like lane departure warning instead of um, lane keeping assistance. Blind spot works very, very well as well. Very useful blind spot in a, a sloping roof line. As you can see that quarter panel over there, um, cannot, you can't see too much. Uh, so that blind spot monitoring is very useful in a car that has a body like this. That should be it for the CHR. Let's go ahead and turn back and give our verdict on the CHR. Alright guys, we're back here again with the CHR. Um, I'm going to show you guys the rear camera on this car. Not too bad. Uh, you got good visibility of it uh, in terms of the saturation and the color and contrast of the actual camera. It's just not up to date anymore. Um, it is very, very dull. Uh, it's not the best quality either. And that could be because of the screen that it's uh, displaying on as well. This is a very, very old infotainment system by Toyota. So yeah, it gives you all right. There's no uh, assist, steering assist for the car uh, in the camera. Uh, that would have been useful, um, but not too bad. Parking and that's about it with the CHR. Let's give the final verdict um, of the CHR. So the verdict for the CHR, in terms of the rod quality and the suspension and the way it drives, super comfortable, super smooth, uh, super quiet as well. That 1.2 liter doesn't make a lot of noise. It also doesn't make a lot of power. And that CVT transmission, it's just very very lazy and it doesn't help with the uh, lack of power that the engine has I think a sports automatic a normal sports automatic could be a lot better but yeah the way it drives no complaint at all um, really comfortable really impressed with it it looks stylish it looks good the space inside at the back seats is not a lot the front is comfortable the seats are good 
there's not much more to ask for we enjoyed filming this car for you guys uh, let us know give us some feedback did you like this car you didn't uh, would you consider buying something like this as it is discontinued um, this uh, is going to be uh, the Toyota is going to be pointing its customers towards the Corolla Cross and the Yaris Cross and I believe this is a much more stylish uh, alternative to what Toyota is pointing you to to the Corolla Cross and the Yaris Cross um, I think yeah, this is just way more stylish and it is discontinued here in Australia last model is going to be the 2023 model which is this year um, but yeah, sad to see it go. It's a fantastic car, as I said. Thank you guys for watching. Give us some feedback. What should we improve in the video? We are going to try and get better audio for our video um, coming soon with a new mic. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. And thank you very much for watching this video. And we'll see you guys in the next one.